Hey, I'm uh, connected to Charles, joining me from Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, great to talk to you. Maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit about the repair-related activities uh, you do in Nigeria with your organization. Okay, thank you very much, Julius. Um, at Policy Lab, um, what we are doing is to advocate for the, you know, uh, the repair movement here in Nigeria. Um, we have a lot of advocacy activities where we, um, you know, um, produce, uh, you know, um, policy materials, educational materials, and interfacing with uh, policymakers um, to be able to provide an enabling environment uh, for repair. You know, this includes also kind of, uh, you know, partnering with, uh, you know, the consumer protection to be able to extend, you know, the life, um, you know, span of mobile phones. Um, then we are organizing community repair training. So we come into communities, uh, you know, we pick up um, really young people and we treat them out to repairs, um, to repair mobile phone and different, um, you know, household electronics. I think this um, adds to um, our advocacy in terms of it is um, actually putting on practical um, steps on how to kind of reduce most of the electronics that end up in landfill here in Nigeria. Yeah, you already told me that you have a big problem with uh, e-waste. What challenges uh, else do you face when it comes to repairing stuff? Yeah, I think that um, naturally, um, you know, um, we have a use and dispose culture here in, in Nigeria and also more so in many African countries, to be honest. Um, the idea that, uh, you know, we don't value um, um, the manufacturing process and also kind of, uh, it's very, very little and the very, very little recycling also goes on here. So many of the products that we use here generally, um, aside from electronics, uh, many of them like plastics end up in landfill. Um, one of the challenges we face is that, uh, you know, the government really doesn't kind of key into the environmental, secular economy, um, you know, balls kind of, you know, so, um, so there is very little activity going on at the policy level in terms of how do we manage, um, you know, waste. So, uh, so that means that, um, the Chinese manufacturers, Taiwanese manufacturers, and every other kind of, uh, you know, um, product is, you know, brought into Nigeria with very little, you know, consumer protection. Um, so you find out that you buy a mobile phone today and it gets broken down in two months later with no spare parts at all for you to be able to to, to replace it with uh, i mean it's 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 it, it's like that here so so that at the, at the at that policy level what we want to do is to be able to kind of have a little form of regulation around um you know accessibility of spare parts um it's very slow um but uh but we are kind of moving the needle in some place so i think that the our greatest challenge is you know government listening to us all right. And what would you say was the reaction of, of the people uh, who, who joined you in, in your repair cafes or trainings? I understood you, you have this gifted hands program where you train girls or, or women to become technicians and repairers. Um, we've seen about 60% of our girls going on to become, you know, professional repairers. Many of them have gone on internship to be able to kind of 60% of, of the, the girls repairing. who participated. Wow, that's impressive. Yes, yes, I've gone on to become, yeah, professional repairers. I mean, in an industry kind of, you know, dominated by men, uh, we are doing our quota to make sure that we kind of uh, uh, bring that, you know, equality, you know, within the, the repair industry. I think uh, if you are familiar with Nigeria, uh, you find out that that industry is particularly, you know, reserved for, for, for men. But we are doing our bit. Um, so, Getting them, um, you know, financial freedom is very, very important. They've been able to kind of uh, set up their own shops. Some of them are working with um, in an apprenticeship system where um, after a couple of months, they could go ahead and set up their own shops. Um, but so far, I think that the value within the community is adding value, making the cost of repair come in. If more people go into repairs, it becomes cheaper because there is competition at the end of the day. So everybody wins, you know, no matter how, how you look at it. But 
adding more value to the lives of these girls is very important, but also kind of helping to be able to solve the problem of repairs within various communities is important. Yeah, thank you. That's that's really impressive. Uh, maybe to to come to an end, do you have a a message or a demand you would uh, address to like the German repair community? Uh, I believe one of the most important thing is um, making the repair culture um, like a, an integral part, you know, of our, of our lives. I think that putting repair uh, inside schools, uh, making it a, a, a very important part of the curriculum, I think, you know, that helps to be able to kind of, you know, drive the, the widespread acceptance um, we've gotten used to consumerism and it's something that also on the aspect of the government, they, they see it as something that drives, you know, the, the, the economy. Um, but, but also like the way, um, electronic devices are manufactured means at some point they will have issues, they will have problems. And that doesn't mean like, as we are thinking of economic growth, we are thinking of also the sustainability in our you know. society. So I think one of the things they should do is repair education needs to be able to go into technical schools, go into regular schools. I think that helps to be able to, from a young age, to be able to bring people up, um, to be, to be repair and secular conscious. Yeah, those are nice uh, closing words. I totally agree with you. And yeah, I want to thank you for, for joining me today and giving us insights in the great work you do in Nigeria.